Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 11th, and it's a pleasant temperature-wise day today here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's only 70 degrees right now. Raining, drizzly rain. Uh, we're going to get up to about 86, so not too bad. Uh, it's going to be a busy day here. We've got uh, roofers coming in on Tuesday uh, to replace our roof, assuming it doesn't rain. And we're getting the attic re-insulated, so we got to pull everything out of the attic, and that's yeah, it's been fun, <laughs> fun, but it'll, it'll it'll get done, and it'll all be for the better good. Uh, so I got one of my uh, J Mouton pipes. This is the one that I twinned with couch, or the first one that I twinned with couch. We have two twins actually, couch and I. And I am smoking hot bookshop. And of course, I got some eight o'clock coffee. It's funny. I, you know, I went on vacation last week, week around the fourth of July, and before we left, I said, "Well, let me clean my percolator." No, I, I, clean is so. I don't know how you guys feel about your coffee pots and percolators and stuff like that. To me, when you wash them, it's just not, you know, like if you put them in the dishwasher, it, it changes something. They got to be seasoned, I guess. I don't know. So what I usually do with the coffee makers when it's, when I'm done with the coffee, I'll knock out the grinds. It's, it's an old time percolator. So you take the basket, I'll knock out the grinds, rinse it out, rinse out all the parts and everything, put it back together, put the, top on loosely so that air can circulate and it dries and in the morning it's ready for the next pot and it's you know been great for many many years but i decided to clean it so i just rinsed out the main pot because that's what i think is most important and then i put the basket and the stem and all that stuff into the dishwasher and pushed wash and we left on our vacation and uh to make a long story short which i don't think i can do at this point the coffee doesn't taste right anymore <laughs> I know it will get back to where it was. It's just it, it's just funny how something that silly, just you know, washing that basket essentially, the well, the basket and the little post that it sits on, has completely altered the flavor of the coffee. Either that or something completely altered me. And you know, I did drink a lot of bad coffee while I was uh oh, bad to me. You know, you're probably sitting there saying you're drinking eight o'clock. What do you know about bad? Anyway wasn't planning on doing a coffee ramble, but it is interesting how just running that those parts to the dishwasher has completely altered the, the flavor of the coffee to the point where I'm just not enjoying it. It'll come back. However, coffee aside, when I returned from my trip, um, it was nice to be home. You know, it was great to start to ease back into my routine, although the roofing thing is not making that easy. And waiting for me in the mail were two packages um, that I, I didn't expect. And I, it's just another really wonderful example of the kindness of pipe smokers and uh, in particular the folks around the, the YouTube pipe community uh, whether they be presenting or just watching it everyone in this community is just just wonderful so I made a video a while back which was a VR for I think it was for Padre Piper I think it was his six questions in June thing and I mentioned that uh, Boris Karloff was my favorite actor, and I really, the, the question was, is there a tobacco you wish you could have tried? And my answer was Union Leader, because that was what Karloff smoked. I really love Karloff. He's my favorite actor. Um, and I just told that story and went on to the next question or whatever. Anyway, so unexpectedly, I had, a, I had two packages waiting for me. And I opened up the first one, and much to my amazement, 
was a box of Union Leader. Unopened. Stamp intact. This is uh, the P. Laura Lard version. So this is before the House of Windsor took it over. This is what Karloff would have smoked. This box is close to 100 years old. Um, no one has opened it in 100 years. And I'm sitting here thinking, can I open this? <laughs> And I know it was meant to be smoked. I know I should, but it's beautiful. I mean, the box is in perfect condition. Um, on the side here, you can see it says it's for pipes or cigarettes, which is kind of interesting. There's the P. Lord information. And that beautiful, oops, beautiful stamp up there. Oh, geez, it's hard to do this on camera. Yeah, so this is just, uh, I was absolutely blown away by this. I didn't think I'd ever have a chance to try it, let alone hold an unopened original manufacturer box of Union Leader. So, but that wasn't all. The same person sent me another package that went along with this. And I hope this shows up okay. Look at that. That is Boris Karloff smoking a pipe, looking very Karloffian. Beautiful art door lighting. I mean, this is this is a fantastic picture, and uh, you know I got to get it framed. But it's a little hard to see because of lighting, but he does have a pipe in his mouth. And uh, Karloff was a, a very, Karloff and Lugosi were uh, very, uh, con not constant, but they smoked pipes a lot. Uh, Cheney was a uh, cigarette guy. So, beautiful picture. I am going to get that framed. Uh, I am going to... I'm not sure where I'm going to hang it up yet. Um, I mean, I'd like to have it down here, but it's it's really nice. I, I might put it in my upstairs office. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to try the Union Leader or not, but uh, both of these were sent to me by my friend Dean. Dean, thank you so much. I, I really, I was blown away by it. I still can't believe that, that I have those two things. And uh, Dean is a friend of mine. He, he's, he's not a YouTube guy. Uh, I don't think you are, Dean. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. But uh, we, uh, he, he's, I've done some pipe work for him. We've traded emails. We just sort of become correspondents. And it, it, it was just wonderful of him to think of me just because of something I said offhandedly in a, in a video and, and send me such a wonderful gift. So thank you, Dean. And uh, I will... I will find a way to repay you. I've been thinking about your uh, your filter question, and we'll we'll come up with something. Uh, relight here. Babble a bit too much over over my my new Karloff picture, I suppose. But I'm I'm really happy about it. <laughs> Uh, there's something nice about early Sunday morning. It's quiet. Neighbors haven't started to mow lawns yet. They will. I honestly, I don't like winter weather. I don't like to be cold. Um... But when I think about summer versus winter, just in terms of the, the feel of the, like you, you step outside in the morning and, you know, in the summertime, you step outside in the morning and you're waiting for the sound. It's going to come. You're going to hear the lawnmower start up. You're going to hear the kids come out and start playing on. You step outside on a morning in, in February, it's silent and nobody's going to start a leaf blower or a lawnmower and the kids are just getting over to school as quickly as possible and, and the doors are closing and you're not here. It's just quiet, peaceful. And, and the world somehow seems smaller 
you know, it just somehow seems, I don't know, it, it's hard to explain, but I like that feeling. I don't like the cold. I don't like the snow. I don't like anything else about it. But I like that feeling. It's like going from a big city to a small town. I don't know. Let me know if you if you feel the same way, or if you understand at least what I'm trying to say here. Oh, there's something starting up now. Ah. Uh. Well, I think I'm getting close to the bottom of my bowl here. Jason, you make a wonderful pipe. I have a fair number of artisan pipes, and I would say 80% of them, the first time you pack them and you light them, you say, okay, this is going to be a pipe. Uh, and you got to, you know, you ultimately got to run a hundred bowls through it before it's your pipe, before it really starts performing well. But it's usually 20 or so before you got some cake built up and everything starts sinking with the pipe. And then you go, ah, this is a good pipe. With Jason's pipes, I mean, I only have, well, I have three of Jason's pipes. And very unique, and he's not the only maker. There's other makers that this has happened, but I only have one example, so I can't say that it's consistent. But with all three of Jason's pipes, the first time I loaded it, I said, huh, this is, this is going to be something uh, special. And it just it changes. You know, this, this bowl is different from the first bowl, and this is probably my 30th bowl through this pipe, I'm guessing. But uh, it's, it's just a good smoke. So whatever you're doing, Jason, you're doing it right. So I go back to work on Monday. Um, I hate saying that. I've been working. I just go back to the office on Monday. Uh, which I'm looking forward to. I really am. You know, it's been great to be able to just wake up and walk down here and turn on the computer and fiddle with pipes while I listen to boring meetings and all that. But I miss people. I miss seeing people. I even miss the commute. It's not a, I don't have a long commute. It's like 15, 20 minutes, depending on the traffic. Uh, and you've seen my commute because I've recorded it. It's, it's pleasant. But, uh, yeah, I even missed that a little. So we're hopefully going to get back to true uh, roadway rambles uh, because I'll be on the road again. Uh, get out of my head, Willie Nelson. So we will hopefully be doing that soon. Not this Wednesday because the roofers are going to be here Tuesday and Wednesday. So I, I'm working from home those two days in case... They need me here. It's highly unlikely, but you never know. So this Wednesday, I will not be doing a live roadway ramble or a, a roadway ramble from the road, I should say. But uh, the following Wednesday, I might. We shall see. My little cigar shop will smoke big vape shop that has cigars. They are still there. And from what the girl that works there told me last time I was there, they're, they're doing really well. I go there to mostly to buy Zippo fluid because they have it and it's nice to kind of support the closest thing I've got to a local brick and mortar. Um, There are other cigar shops, but they don't sell Zippo fluid, so they're lost.
Because I always, you know, you don't just, you don't go into a shop that has a nice humidor and just buy Zippo fluid, you're going to buy cigars. One or two. So I'll be back there. Back, uh, back at work. It's going to be strange. You know, a lot of people are still uncomfortable about sitting down in a room with people. Uh, me, you know, I was ready last uh, last April to get back to work. You know. <laughs> we won't get into all that. So it's going to be interesting for me because I, you know, I've got to handle these people that not handle them. I've got to I've got to work with them. Um, and they ha they all have they're coming from very different places with regards to what they're comfortable with um and some of them have medical conditions some of them you know they, they, there's a lot of things that have to be considered and my role you know I, I i yearn for the days when my role was to go in and do my work and come home but that's not true anymore my role is to get people to do their work to do their work at a very high level and to be most importantly safe but also happy and comfortable in in their role so i get to be a psychologist for uh, for a good part of my life now that's okay i like the people when you got good people working for you it doesn't matter I treat them as adults. They treat me as an adult. Yeah, that's really. I, I think if if I and I will never do this, but if I was ever to write a book on managing uh, scientists, because that's what I do, it would be really short, and it would just be, you know, you, the person is a scientist. They 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 they're an adult. They know what they're doing. Let them do what they're doing. You know? <laughs> Trust them. That's the key. Trust them. And I know in some, some management situations you can't do that. But when you're managing scientists, they, they want to, you know, and I am one, I want to get to the truth. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, you know, not do the experiment because I don't know, I wanna goof off and play uh, whatever the latest own game is or something. It just they're just not like that. So all you have to do is treat them like adults and say, we got to get this done. And they say, yep, let's get it done. And it's, it's wonderful to work with people like that. The worst thing you can do with, when you're managing a scientist is tell them exactly what to do. You know, micromanage them because that, that removes all the creativity and serendipity in science, which is really important. So, you know, I, I got, I've been doing this kind of science for, uh, oh gosh, half my life. And that's not going to work, Ava. Speaking of Zippo flu. And, uh, you know, I, I know exactly how I want the experiment designed. But I won't tell the person that's going to run the experiment that because they might see something differently than I do and they may come up with something. So I'll let them, you know, and I'll say, let's check in after you got the, the study designed and we'll take a look at it. Nine times out of ten, it's exactly what I would have done. Um, sometimes with a little bit of a, of a twist. Of that remaining 10% uh, there, most of the time it's something I hadn't thought of that's really good. And occasionally I have to say, hey, did you see this thing over here? But that's rare. That's really rare. And uh, the problem is, I think a lot of people start with do exactly this, and it removes that creativity. Well, folks, I was not planning to talk about that. I see we're up close to 20 minutes. Uh, so if you're still with me, thank you. Uh, this pipe is practically out now. Uh, it was just one of those wonderful. Wonderful smokes. I didn't want to stop for it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a fantastic week ahead. I hope you're all uh, all doing well. Uh, stay close to your families. Give them a hug. 
And uh, we'll be back probably on Wednesday, probably not on the road, but we will see you. All right, my friends, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.